All right, let's talk about your free B. <laughs> the letter B in Chancery Cursive. I use a system for analyzing the angle of the pen nib. I have a system where I draw a square, then do a diagonal from corner to corner in that square, then from middle to corner and middle to corner, and I label each of these one, two, three, four, five. And as we go through all the letters, you'll find me making reference to what angle we hold the nib at. Now, having said all that, let me be sure to be clear. The correct, proper, purest way to do chancery cursive is to hold your pen at a 30 degree angle. You got your protractor, right? <laughs> no, you don't. So I don't know what a 30 degree angle is, but I'll tell you, it's at about three and a half. So that is the traditional angle for holding a pen for doing chancery cursive. But here we go. I'm going to mess with the rules a little bit and ask you to tweak that just a little bit. In fact, at the very beginning of the letter B, I'm going to say instead of holding your pen at a 30 degree or my three and a half degree uh, uh, point, you're going to hold your pen at a four. Why? Because I want the first stroke to be a little bit thinner than we would get if we held it at a three and a half. So do you see my elbow comes in? My pen is turning a little bit, creating that number four, degree, uh, four angle. And we begin by going straight to the left and then curving so gracefully down to about seven or eight o'clock on a clock face. If, do you understand? That's the point at which we end that curve. That's the beginning of the letter B. And the next stroke is much simpler, and now we go back to holding our pen in the traditional proper three and a half or 30 degree angle Starting there, we go straight down to the bottom of the letter, the baseline, and then kick out a little bit to the left, straight out like that. Now, when I say straight down, you understand we're doing an italicized alphabet. That is, everything in the alphabet, I'll, I'll do it from your point of view, slants a little bit to the right. Got it? So when I say straight down, of course, I don't mean straight. I mean straight parallel with the italicized angle. So that's what I've done here. Now the next stroke in the letter B, holding the pen in the traditional angle, but here we're going to do something even different. Are you ready? I'm going to throw a lot of curves at you. <laughs> here it is. I'm going to make my pen, in a sense, pop a wheelie. I'm going to pull it up. My, you see my wrist goes down? So the only part of the pen in contact with the paper is this one corner. I don't have the whole pen in contact with the paper, just the corner. It's what I call make it pop a wheelie or stand on its hind legs. You get the idea. So I lower my wrist and I go straight up to the top of the letter. Then I level up my pen so it's now in contact with the paper and do the top loop of the B coming straight down. And then you can usually do this in one motion, straight down, keep your pen in contact with the paper and straight down again to the bottom of the letter. Now you'll notice we've got something very important missing in the letter B, and that is it sort of looks like an R. You, you, you very rarely can you make your pen go uphill. You, you're not supposed to push a calligraphy pen. Of course, you can push this double pencil tool because it's so nice and friendly, but most of the time you can't push a pen, especially on a stroke this long. So you're going to lift up. Let's pretend that I didn't make this line here. Hey, ready? Let's pretend that I just ended right there. Then I pick up my pen, reset it, at the, again, the traditional angle, three and a half or 30 degree, and then draw the pen along the bottom of the baseline till it meets that curve. There you go. That's a capital B. Let me do it again without so much talking. Starting at a number four angle, horizontal, then curving down to seven or eight o'clock, back to the top, straight in line with the italicized angle, hooking out a little bit at the bottom. Then I make my pen pop a little wheelie, comes up here. Then I lay it down at the top, do curve number one, and curve number two to the bottom of the letter right there. And then I pick up, start here at the end of this, kick out at the end of this foot, and draw my pen straight along the bottom of the letter till it hits the bottom of that curve. I'm going to fatten that up just a little bit. There we go. Got it? You understand that if this were a pen, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be a gap between here, so there would be a line right there. Does that make sense? Now let's talk about the lowercase b. 
starting holding my pen at the traditional three and a half angle from the top of the letter all the way to the bottom and the and and keeping it straight at the bottom now let's talk about how the labels that that calligraphers use for these different parts of the letters the 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 middle part of the letter is called the x height x height and for obvious reasons that's how tall quote unquote the x is this top part of the letter is called the ascender because it goes up and the bottom part of the letter is called the descender like the letter y has comes down here and so forth the letter b has an ascender got it so it starts at the top of the ascender line comes straight down and stops at the bottom of the x height at the baseline then we come back up here and add a f what i call a flag to the top of the ascender which is you draw your your pen straight across like that creating that little hook, what I call the flag. Now, the rest of the B, very much like I did here where I make my, make my pen pop a little wheelie, I do that right here as well. Up, lay it down, and then finish the curve. This time, we finish the curve all the way to the bottom of the stem. Does that make sense? And you notice if we do that, then we're actually pushing the pen uphill but it's such a short distance that usually your pen can handle that. If it can't, then you stop the curve here and draw, just like we did on the capital. Good enough? Now let's go to the felt tip marker because this is such a great tool. You can carry it with you, stick it in your pocket, in your purse, uh, practice, with, practice anywhere, waiting in the doctor's office, waiting in the carpool line at school, whatever it is, you can be working on your calligraphy, playing with your calligraphy wherever you are. So it's a great tool. Let's do the capital B again. Get starting in the number four position. I want to make sure that this first stroke is horizontal before I start coming downhill to the curve. Let me do that again. Starts out horizontal, then comes down in a curve. Back to the top. A straight line all the way to the bottom of the letter and kick out. Now pop a little wheelie. Curve number one and curve number two down to the baseline of the B, pick up. Now I'm gonna draw from left to right, connecting to that curve, and that's the capital B. Lowercase b, starting at the top of the ascender guideline, straight down, and I don't put a hook or any kind of foot at the bottom of that stroke for the letter B. Let's go back to the top and create that flag pulling straight across, then the, the loop of the B, make your pen stand on its hind legs, just that one corner of the pen doing the writing, coming down, and here, right at the bottom, pushing my pen uphill to make it connect to the bottom, of the, to the base of the B. Now, let's go to the workhorse of the calligraphy world, which is the dip pen, the traditional metal point uh, Calligraphy pen. The reason we use a real calligraphy pen instead of a felt tip marker for quote unquote real work is because the click, the, <laughs> I'll say the word eventually, <laughs> the calligraphy pen makes nice discrete lines. It's th these lines are thinner than you can get with the felt tip marker. Get it? But we have a love hate relationship with this pen because this is also the one that fails to write and that drips and squiggles and squawks and complains and 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 makes bad marks and so forth. So we have this, if you feel like you have a love-hate relationship with your dip pen, I want you to know you're not doing something wrong. That's just the nature of the beast. Therefore, I always have a piece of scrap paper, usually, usually a sticky note at the top of my page where I can, in a sense, train, warm up my pen to make sure it's behaving just the way I want it to before I start doing my letters. I'm ready now. Top curve starts out horizontal curves down to about 7, 8, or 8 o'clock on a dial face. And the next stroke, straight down, parallel to the italics slant, and kick out at the bottom. Next, I pop a little wheelie here. You see, now that line is nice and thin, just the way I like it to be in calligraphy. And then I curve down to about the midpoint of the B. I picked up my pen this time. If you can do it in one stroke, good for you. I'm doing it in two this time. Then another curve down here to the base of the B, and I'm almost done. One more stroke along the bottom, and I'm all done. That's a capital B. Good enough. 
Now let's do the lowercase b. I start at the top of the ascender guideline, one stroke, holding my pen at the traditional angle. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to the top and add that little flag. Again, holding my pen at the traditional angle, 30 degrees, or what I call three and a half. That's a traditional angle. Now, still at the traditional angle, but look, my wrist comes down. I make my pen go at a different angle. Do you see that? So now I'm just the only part of the pen in contact with the paper, and I'm, it's dry. And again, I'm, I'm glad to show you those little, those little foibles because that's what's going to happen to you. You put the pen down. It's not making a mark. You're not doing something wrong. That's just the nature of the beast. So I redip my pen, come down here, kick my pen up so just one corner is writing, lay it down, and then do the final loop. And if I can get away with it, I'm going to push my pen uphill. Do you know what I mean? Normally, we draw the pen, but sometimes we can get away with pushing it, and I did there. That's the lowercase b. Now, one more thing we want to talk about before we leave this letter alone, and that is, how do you connect this letter to the next one? Please understand that in Chancery Cursive, some of the letters are connected and some of them aren't. The B is not too difficult to connect because you can simply come down here and again, make your pen, pop that little wheelie and do an extension on the letter like this so that you come up to the next letter, which in this case, I'll make the letter I and it's ready to connect. That's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. You don't need to do that. You understand this is a matter of artistic license, artistic taste. There'll be times when that connector is visually needed, you feel like you want it, there'll be times that you don't. Your call. On the other hand, what if the letter B is the final letter, is the final letter in a, in a whole line of text? You're, you've got a bunch of words, the last word ends with the letter B. A lot of times calligraphers will want to add a little flourish to the last letter. And the B doesn't really give itself very naturally to such a flourish. There, there would be two ways you could do it. One is you could do just like we did here and start something like this and then perhaps do a big S curve. The answer is if it looks good, it's good. If it doesn't, it's not. It's possible you might add something to the extender up to the flag up here, some kind of curve like that. Eh, that's weak. It depends on the context where it is. These flourishes are completely your call, your taste. Do it if it looks good and if you need it. The B doesn't lend itself quite as well as some letters do to that final flourish. But that's the letter B. I hope you'll enjoy doing all of our letters. Let's keep going.